about the death penalty and this is about Troy Davis. We need to stop the execution of Troy Davis. We are all Troy Davis and we are all his executioners unless we stop it. And we're out here today very proud to join our voices with thousands of people around the country really who are standing up demanding that Troy Davis be freed and that the death penalty be abolished. I'm here uh, for Troy Davis, who faces execution soon, unless there's justice in this country. We have to stand up when there's a wrong. In the face of inequity and inequality like we see here, in the face of a, a moment in time when there are eight people that are recanting and saying that we were pressured, perhaps we were wrong, perhaps our eyes failed us, perhaps an innocent man is going to be executed as a nation watches. Thank you. Hey, uh, we... uh, it was just only a couple of months ago that this was nothing more than just a blip on the news screen, if it even would have been that. Uh, I'm privileged just to be a part of this story. Now, no one heard this story. No one wanted to hear this story. The more I spoke, the more ears was closed. No one wanted to hear one of the many voices of everyone ever said, I didn't do this. But Troy Davis is one of the many stories that I used to read of thinking, at what point is people going to realize there's a possibility that an innocent man is in prison? I start reading the stories about the Innocent Projects where DNA was clearing everybody. But what about the cases that never had DNA? Troy Davis produced compelling evidence that he was innocent, but the courts are saying that it's too late. There's an expiration date on justice. And we're here to say that justice has no expiration date. I'm, I'm Emma, I'm nine years old. And I'm Olivia, and I'm 16. We are the daughters of Jeff Ellis, and we've been involved with death penalty our whole lives. You know, from a young age, we were taught that it was an evil institution, and we've always been advocating against it. Um, today, we just got involved. We came down here to support my dad, but we're also here to support Troy Davis. Who's Troy Davis? Oh, she doesn't want to say. We're Troy Davis, that's the answer. <laughs> There's one liberty that we cannot take, and that is life. So as we look around here today, and maybe we are 40 or 50 strong, I hope that in the upcoming months we will be 200, 300, 400, 1,000 strong. Appeal for Troy Davis on death row, Georgia, USA. What can I say? The man will be killed. Years ago, the state began preparations. Not the first time. Knew what to do. Took many a life before him. Took doctors until they refused to measure the dose for lethal injection. Took governors, statesmen to explain the why. Took willing guards, many unwilling, in too many prisons to make a captive suitable for sacrifice. What can I say that has not been said? Let the man live, halt his sacrifice. Today is his mother's birthday, and it's her 20th birthday without her son. And then she would want nothing more than to have him home for a birthday. Hopefully her, her next birthday, she's getting old. He takes soap, a bar of soap, and he creases his wet, uniform and he dries it under his mattress so that it has creases. It's all these things that are human dignity that we don't think about when we think of a prisoner. Anything about Troy before coming down here? No, I had no idea. About well, Troy. I've seen something about it on TV. I'm not sure if it was this case in particular, but yeah. Um, so you just passed him by and saw the signs and stuff? Yeah. yeah. And so what made you decide to stop and, you know, find the, write the note and find things? Um, curiosity, kind of, see what was going on. There's a man on death row down in Georgia, an innocent man standing tall. But if Troy Davis is executed, the blame will be on us all. Justice wants meant to do the right thing. Just this once make it so Just this once meant the freedom ring So just this once let him go 
just this once meant to do the right thing Just this once make it so Just this once meant to let freedom ring So just this once let him go Just this once let him go Just this once let him go There you go, Troy Davis, thank you. I was walking down the street to be very truthful, and then I seen that you guys were fighting over here for, for basically to stand up for some things that need to be addressed. This is something that's so important, that's so egregious, that we need to all be out here. I pray to God that this man get some justice. And so I'm here to fight, and I hope that his family, I'm standing in prayer for his family, that one day that he will get his rights. I'm an opponent of the death penalty under all circumstances, but in this particular case, um, just because it's legal doesn't make it right. And Where is justice for me? In 1989, I surrendered myself to police for crimes I knew I was innocent of in an effort to seek justice through the court system in Savannah, Georgia, USA. But like so many death penalty cases, that was not my fate, and I have been denied justice. During my imprisonment, I have lost more than my freedom. I have lost my father, my, and my family has suffered terribly, many times being treated as less than human and even as criminals. In the past, I have had lawyers who refused my input and would not represent me in the manner that I wanted to be represented. I have had witnesses against me threatened into making false statements to seal my death sentence and witnesses who wanted to tell the truth who were vilified in court. For the entire two years, I was in jail awaiting trial. I wore a handmade cross around my neck. It gave me peace, and when a news reporter made a statement in the local news, cop killer wears cross to court, the cross was immediately taken as if I was unworthy, of, unworthy to believe in God or him in me. The only time my family was allowed to enter the courtroom on my behalf was during the sentencing phase where my mother and sister had to beg for my life. And the prosecutor simply said, I was only fit for killing. Where is the justice for me? When the courts have refused to allow me relief when multiple witnesses have recanted their testimonies that they lied against me. Because of the anti-terrorism bill, the blatant racism and bias in the U.S. court system, I remain on death row in spite of, the compel of a compelling case of my innocence. Finally, I have a private law firm trying to help save my life in the court system. But it is like no one wants to admit the system made another grave mistake. Am I to be made an example of to save face? Does anyone care about my family who has been victimized by this death sentence for over 16 years? Does anyone care that my family has the fate of knowing that time and the manner by which I may be killed by the state of Georgia? I truly understand that life has been lost, and I have prayed for that family just as I pray for mine. But I am innocent, and all I ask is, is a true day in a just court. If I am so guilty, why do the courts deny me that? The truth is that they have no real case. The truth is I am innocent. Where is the justice for me?